Here's a quick demonstration of how to use the curves adjustment in Photoshop Elements. We have a picture open here which it looks a little bit flat and needs an increase in contrast. Now normally the first thing I'd look at is the Levels palette to see if I could trim the endpoints to give the picture a bit more contrast, beef it up a little bit. But looking at the histogram that I've got open over here, you can see that there's already detail right into the black area and detail right up to the white area. So there's no room for adjustment in levels in this particular case. Now there is a brightness and contrast adjustment, but to be quite honest, I would never use that. It's a bit um, hit and miss, a bit blind. The more professional way to do it is to use the adjustment color curves. So we'll open that now. Here is the Enhance menu, Adjust Color, uh, Adjust Color Curves opens this little window here where we can adjust the color curves. Now, we have first of all a before window and an after window. So we, as we make the changes, the after picture will change and we can compare it to the before. Down here on the left, we've got various styles or presets that cover most eventualities. The first one here, backlight, will make the picture slightly less contrasty, which is what we need to do if we're correcting a picture which has been taken in backlight conditions. Uh, darken highlights does what it says on the tin, um, and so on and so on. What we, we need to do in this particular case is to increase the contrast in the picture. As you can see, if I hit the preset here, the contrast increases quite nicely, but it's not quite what we want. Uh, so we can make a few adjustments down here. But first of all, let's have a look at this little graph over here. If I go back to the default position, as you can see, it's a straight line. So this graph here will plot the changes that we make as we work. Down here in the left hand corner is the black that represents black, this point here, and top right hand corner represents white, and all the tones in the picture are mapped along this straight line. We've got three preset points here, a mid-range point, highlight point, and a shadow point. If I hit this increase contrast button again, you'll see that the curve now changes to an S shape. Now the graph in between these two shadow and highlight points now becomes steeper and that is reflected in the fact that the contrast is now higher. Now the trade-off for this is that the very top end, the, the ultra highlights and the shadow end become a little bit shallower. So there is in fact less contrast at the extremes of the picture. But uh, by the nature of the picture, it's that mid-range between here and here that we're actually looking to improve. We're not too worried about, in fact, the whiter this gets, the better. The, the plainer the background gets, the better we'll like it. If you had lots of spectral highlights, then you've got to watch this end and make sure they don't go completely white. Okay, so the preset has done a pretty good job so far. But we can make other adjustments by moving these sliders over here. The highlights slider moves this point here. And if I move it to the right, it'll go up. Move it to the left, it'll go down. You see changing the curve as it goes and also changing the picture. So if I push it that way, the contrast gets more because this, this curve here gets steeper. And if I push it the other way, then the contrast decreases in that portion of the curve. Okay. And the shadows uh, slider moves this point down here, up and down. Now the middle point has got two sliders. The top one moves the slider up and down in the same way. And the other slider that would call mid-tone contrast will move the point from side to side. And as you'll see, that can have a great effect on the amount of contrast 
in that part of the picture. So just to get the whole thing back to where we started. Now what I'm looking at when I look at the picture, I'm looking at this area here which I want to lighten up a bit. I want this area here to remain a similar contrast. I don't want that to become too contrasty. And I'm looking also at this part here. I don't want to lose too much detail. So the first thing to do is increase my mid-tone brightness. And I'm looking at the cheek here as I do it and seeing that that's the sort of density I want there. Now you'll see that this arm here has started to get a little bit too contrasty. Even though we haven't got any white patches appearing yet, it's starting to look a little bit uh, unpleasant. So decreasing the mid-tone contrast will actually lighten up these bits on the edge and restore the contrast on that side. Um, now my other I'll just brighten that up a little bit more, I think. Okay. And the other part of the picture that I'm sort of keeping an eye on is this lens barrel around here because I don't want to lose all the detail in that. So I can adjust the shadows a little bit just to push a bit more detail back into that. Because so as you can see, you've got a, a lot of fine tuning that you can do. Okay, let's click away from there because that picture is a little bit too small to, to really judge properly. If you have uh, the full grown up version of Photoshop, you actually get to work on the picture. You get to see the, the whole picture while you're doing it. So that, that makes life a little bit easier. So that's one little thing that uh, you get when you pay all that extra for the, the full grown Photoshop. Now, if I just click back, uh, if I click undo to that, we can have a look at the original picture. And then if I click redo, hopefully here, uh, we can see what a difference it's made. The whole thing has much more punch, has actually more color. It would appear to have more color. In it. Um, and that's exactly what we wanted to do. And we've done it without losing any pixel information. All we've done is juggle it around. Okay, so that's what you can do with the curves adjustment.